Okay, the TV is on. I'm going to reduce the TV because I was just listening to some Afro beats from all parts of West Africa and Africa. Yeah. So, like I was saying, it's my hair. It's no wig. Um. Okay, I think it's okay now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you for tuning on to my channel today. Hi, this is your favorite babe, your favorite TT, Kirsty Valentine. I love you guys. Thank you very much for supporting this channel by subscribing. Some people will not subscribe, but they come to my videos. They come to my channel, they watch my videos. Thank you so, so much. I also want to use this opportunity to say thank you very much, Oviedo. Thank you so much. I love you so much. You have been so, 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 so supportive. I also want to say thank you very much to Shayo Shay. Shay Shayo. I call her Shay Shayo Shayo Shay. Thank you so, so, so much. Uh, your, 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 your comments are very inspirational. They jiggle my memory. They really push me out there to go and source out my information and come back and make my videos. Thank you so, so much. I also want to say thank you for every subscriber, everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much. And to all my Facebook friends who, who I have tagged in my videos, who have actually gone to my YouTube channel and they have subscribed and they have watched my videos. You know, I just want to say thank you so much. I really do appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody. Some people will not comment, but they will watch your videos. Some people will subscribe, but they would everybody whatever you have done is positive is it's um it's supporting me thank you so 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 much if you notice this bead it's a beautiful bead as you can see what does that represent that is the topic i'm talking about today it's about the current situation going on in africa today um it's, it, I, I wasn't going to, in my prep video that I have, I'm, I'm going to post out there bef before this video. Um, I wasn't going to talk about it because there are so many, there are so many videos about it. But I thought, you know, I need to talk about it. it it's concerning, if I really, if I don't have anybody living in South Africa who, you know, I would have somebody or know somebody who knows somebody who actually this unfortunate situation has affected and it's not something that i as a black woman and secondly as a, an african is is proud of i'm really really deep, uh, troubled about this i'm really concerned i really don't know what to do about it so what i what i know i could do about it is to come on my social media platform to talk about it it is so sad I, it's called I, I've, I've never been able to pronounce that name that's how her, her, that's how deeply hurt i am it's called xenophobia or xenophobia you all know what it is because this is the bead that represents what is going on in that part of the world today this is a south african bead i actually bought it from a south african shop this bead i bought it in a south african shop and i've had it for years and i love it because it, it depicts how colorful black people are, especially Africans. We are very, very colorful people, regardless of whatever our history is and what, what we have been through. We are happy people. We are sing, uh, joyous, people, joyous people. We are community-based people. We are family-oriented uh, people. We are very colorful people and we are happy people. We might not have all the economical powers of the world, but we are very, very happy people. My topic today is a few things I want to touch on. I mean, it's, it's deeply rooted within us as Africa. It affects the whole of Africa, especially black Africa. And it's got branches. And each branch, branches have got branches, branches. And each branches have got shoots coming out. And those shoots have got three other branches. So there is a lot of issues involved. But I want to touch on a few of the issues I really want to uh, focus on um, is about the killing, the current killing situation of fellow Africans, black Africans in South Africa. Not just Nigerians, they are killing Zimbabweans, 
They are killing Zambians. They are killing Ethiopians. They are killing a, 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 a Pakistanis. They started attacking Pakistani shops right now. They are asking them to go. Some, Paki some Pakistanis have actually, when they were killing fellow black people, some started packing up their business, shutting it down and running out. You know, so it's not just Nigerians. They are attacking Ghanaians. Are Ghanaians, they are attacking Ghanaians. They don't want Ghanaians. They are attacking Nigerians. They are attacking Zambians. They are, uh, they are attacking Namibians. They are attacking Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is next door to South Africa. And Zimbabwe, during the struggle of apartheid and freedom for blacks in South Africa, Zimbabwe was a strong force. They were very influential. They, they did a lot of things out and they fought apartheid to set their fellow black brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers free. Bro, bro. This is why I would say, may the soul of Robert Mugabe rest in peace. Yes, he might not have done certain things right. Yeah, but he stood. He was a, a, a rock for South Africa. And the, a lot of Zimbabweans have lost their lives in South Africa. Excuse me. Then you got Togolese, you got Republic of Benin, you got Ghanaians, you got a lot of other African nationalities from the coast of West Africa and in South Africa. Do you know? It's, it's so sad. Now, the reasons why our brothers and sisters are dying, it would never be supported. Uh, would never, be, never, be, never, never be encouraged. It's something that I, the world we always condemn. It's something I personally we always condemn because I don't believe that anybody has the right to take another person's life away from them. You do not have the right to take another person's life. If you have not given life to somebody, you do not have the right to take another person's life. And this is as a result of desperation. This is as a result of young men and young women seeking and going out there for greener pastures which they cannot find in their homes people don't just leave their home or you know where they are or where they have known where they were born where they were brought up where they went when had their primary and nursery school and higher institution education they don't just leave where they are and all they know and their family and decide to go on this unknown treacherous journey to a country they've never been before take that risk mentally emotionally physically to start their life all over again for a better life and sometimes they end up in a country where they don't speak the language they don't know nobody they don't have they don't even understand they don't they have a different culture some people are stuck in russia i have a cousin who is stuck in russia his intention was not to go to russia his intention was to go to germany and he got stuck in Russia and he can't get out of Russia. You know, so when I think about all these things, it's something that I, Kirsty Valentine, I cannot ignore because I've got to talk about it. Yeah. For, I just want to quickly say before I start that for those who have lost their lives, may your perfect soul, beautiful soul, find internal peace. And for those who have lost a loved one, May God give you the guidance and the courage and the strength to overcome it and move on and also to be successful in life. May the memory and the name of those you have lost in your family never go unannounced or uncelebrated. Their name will continue to live forever and in a good and positive way and not in a negative way. So, I just want to remind South Africa and South Africans that what you are today, the freedom that you have today, is because the whole of Africa, not just Africa, the whole of Africa America, the whole of African Caribbean fought for your freedom. So don't forget that because everybody remembers, the whole world knows. I'm just asking South Africa and South Africans, 
Even their president who came out to say we don't want a situation where a foreigner now becomes the head of state in our country. I want you to all remember the part that Robert Mugabe played for the freedom of Nessie Mandela and for the freedom of the black man in his own native land during the times of apartheid. So I just want to remind South Africans that. I want you to also know the part that Zambians always played for your own freedom. I want you to remember the part, the, the, the part that Namibians played for your freedom. I want you to remember the part that Angolans played, played for your own freedom. Uganda, Sudan. I want you to remember uh, uh, Nigeria. I want you to remember Ghana. Nigeria forfeited, forfeited the whole of Nigeria forfeited one month salary and that was the money that Nigeria remitted to send to South Africa to be able to fight and give you economic power to fight against the white man's oppression apartheid government to bring the world and foundation of apartheid down and that is how you got your freedom South Africa because the whole of Africa black Africa fought for your freedom no table and chair was unturned. Ghana played a part. They fought against the white man in South Africa. So that you, your fellow, your fellow black brothers and sisters, your, your fe you fellow father, black South African father and mothers, so that you people will have your freedom. Ghanaians, they fought. Gambia, Senegal, the whole of West Africa, Cameroon, Guinea Bissau, Guinea, we fought. Mali, we fought for you people. The whole of Africa fought so that you people would be free. When other nations in Africa were free of the white man's oppression and discrimination, you people were still in bondage. The whole of Africa fought. We exposed what was going on in South Africa to the world. When the Western media was hiding it, manipulating the stories, Black Africa, we penetrated and we perpetuated it in the media to bring the world's attention to what is going on in South Africa. The brutality of the white man against Blacks and colored people. Yes, Ghanaians, they fought, Ghanaians, they fought for you people, for your freedom, South Africa. Nigerians, we forfeited the whole workers, workers in Nigeria for one month. They surrendered their pay. They had their own children. They had their own, they had their own problem. They had their own issues. They forfeited their, their salary for the month and sent it to South Africa for your freedom. I wish Nelson Mandela was alive today. And I wish Winnie Mandela was alive today to testify to these things. And I know that wherever Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela, wherever they are, they are turning in their grave because this is not what they fought for. It is so disappointing. It is disheartening to see what our own fellow black people that we fought for, that we loved for, that we loved and fought for, what they are doing to the same fellow black people who fought for them to get their freedom you have killed a lot of Ghanaians you have shut down their shops you have done the same to, uh, to, to, to Nigerians you have done the same to Zambians you have done this, the same to Zimbabweans the Zimbabweans they have suffered a lot in the hands of South Africans you've done a lot to Namibia you've done you don't even want foreigners in that country in your own country Fair enough. You don't want foreigners in your country because you are scared that they will come and take over your government because you have been under the suppression and oppression of the Dutch apartheid government. I could understand that to a certain extent, but not to actually kill and start burning people, a fellow black person, alive. It will never be accepted. You see, in this life, let your hands and your mind be free. 
Don't let blood be upon you or your hands. Because when human blood is on your hands, it is a curse on you and your family. If you want other African nationalities in your country to live, let them live peacefully. Pay them off. Shut their business down. Pay them what their business is worth. And let them go to their country. There we go. But you have no right to go from house to house looking for Ghanaians, looking for Zimbabweans, looking for Nigerians, looking for Zambians, looking for other na African national, a black man like you, to drag them up, beat them up, burn them, and take over their businesses. What about your South African sisters who got married to other African men? What about the children they have for them? Have you not taken their husband away from them? Have you not taken their father away from those children? What are you going to tell them? Because their father was a foreigner, because your husband was a foreigner, but from another African country, he didn't have the right to come here. So we killed him and burnt him alive. So this is why I say that for you South Africans who are taking those knives and machets, going up and down, taking petrol and fireboxes and everything to burn your fellow black Africa. Know that the blood of these people are in your hands, in the hands, in the head, upon you and your children and your generation. Please, South Africans, I beg and I pray that do not forget the struggle of black Africa for your freedom that you are enjoying today. Don't forget, because it is in history. If you try to forget, the world will not forget, because the world knows. Xenophobia is not a good thing. It's horrible. It happened during the war of Hitler, the Holocaust. That alone should be an example. The slave trade was another form. Of xenophobia in the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. It is, yes. People who were people were forcefully taken out of their home and their environment and sold out. And if, if they reject, if, if they refused or fought, they would be thrown into the sea. Crocodiles will eat them. They use them as bait to catch crocodiles. They threw them inside the sea. Crocodiles will eat them, shark will eat them. It happened. That's another form of xenophobia. The amphibia and the black man, this alone should teach us a lesson. It happened recently in Europe. We used to have, con uh, we used to have, we used to have, um, we used to have Yugoslavia. We used to have Czechoslovakia. I remember it was happening. A lot of them were rescued and brought to Highland. A lot of them were rescued and brought to England. This was white people, Europeans against white people. It happened. A lot of people lost their lives. It's not a good thing. It happened again in Rwanda, the Hutus. When they were killing each other. They have, war, they have the war museum. Go and look at people's skulls. People have been maimed for life. It happened in Sierra Leone. People's hands chopped away. What do you gain from all these things? There is nothing to gain. Nothing to gain. Apart from the intelligence of people, the, brain, the people that have, that have lost their life, that would have been of benefit to that country, that lost their life due to ignorance and hatred. Because you are, from, you are not my skin color. You are not my tribe. You are coming to take over my land. Let this be a warning to Nigerians. I also want to use this opportunity to say, let this be a warning to Nigerians who don't like what they have. They don't like what they have. They don't appreciate what they got. When I was growing up, my grandmother always said to me, be contented with what you have. Like what you have, appreciate what you have, nurture what you have, take care of what you have. It will take care of you, it will grow. 
the grass is never greener at the other side of the fence the grass is greener inside your own compound in your own fence the reason why is because you have to plant that seed in the right spot on the right soil you plant the seed water it and make sure it has enough air and sunshine it will give you bountiful harvest i have seen a lot of videos on all social media platforms you know it twitter instagram name it we all know the social media platforms yes South african women are praising nigerian men and you don't need to explain to me what my nigerian people will do that is how they will be they'll be showing off they'll be doing like this they'll be doing like that some of you have got wives in africa in nigeria that you got married to and you left and you said you are going to South Africa. You get to South Africa, you will go and marry a South African woman. What you did not even do for your girlfriend, who was with you when you had nothing, you'll be doing it for that South African. And you will abandon the one that suffered with you at home. Not just Nigerian men, Ghana men, you do it. It's all over the place. What you did not do for the woman who, whom, who suffered with you, in Nigeria, when you had nothing, who put tomatoes on her head to go and sell to gather money to help you to buy your, 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 your ticket and look for your visa? You will go to South Africa. You, you will do everything. You'll be, you'll be doing everything for the South African woman. In fact, some of you will so run your women, your Nigerian women down. You have nothing good to say about your Nigerian women when you start following all these women. And if you look at the South African women or some of the women they carry, they are not even a quarter up to the Ghanaian wives or girlfriends or the Nigerian women or wives or the Togolese wife or women or the Cameroon wife or women that you left back home in your country. How many Ghanaian women, how many Cameroon women, how many Nigerian women, how many Togolese women HIV? We, it's not rampant in West Africa. It's the South Africans who have HIV. HIV is nothing to them. They treat it like malaria. A, 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 this, a South African woman who cannot even brush her teeth or clean her teeth very well. You'll be doing, you'll be carrying her, pampering her. Somebody who is not even fit to be the girl, a house girl to your Ghanaian wife. Who is somebody who is not fit to be a house girl to your Nigerian wife or Cameroon wife or Togolese wife or a Gambian wife? You'll be pampering her, you'll buy her car, you'll be taking her to Dubai, doing everything. I see them, you take them to restaurants. Showing off, giving them false impression. Now that they have driven you out of their country, where will you go? And if you are somebody who has had children with that South African children, so you can see that the South African woman will not follow you back to Ghana, he won't follow you back to Nigeria, he won't follow you back to Mali, he won't follow you back to Gambia, he won't follow you back to Senegal, he won't follow you back to Togo, Republic of Benin, Cameroon, he won't follow you back there. So you see, he lost it all. So the same Nigerian women that you have been condemning, that is where you are now going to go to. The same Nigerian women that you are, the same Nigeria, that, that is, is, that, is the same Ghana women that you are condemning, the same Cameroon women you are condemning, the same woman that come from your own native country in West Africa that you are condemning at the same country. Is that not where you are going to go to now? Where is your face? Where will you put your face? Where? Where are you going to put your face? So this is why I say, love what you have. Appreciate what you got. Love what you have. Appreciate what you got. Not what you don't have. Excuse me. Love what you have. Appreciate what you got. You know, there is nothing like your home. There's nothing like your motherland. They don't have anything against foreign land. But always have it at the back of your mind. That is a foreign land. It's not your land. There are certain things they will say to you, certain ways they will behave to you. You will know you are not from that place. Nobody needs to tell you. You will know it's not your home and that there is no place like home. Your home is your home. You will know that. Yeah? So this is South Africa. South Africa. Yeah? 
Remember that anything you do to your fellow Africa, especially those, uh, those of us that come from West Africa or some certain parts, other certain countries or Central Africa or East Africa, the way you treat them, remember that when you, you, we all have 10 fingers, when you point one finger, remember that the remaining four will come to you. Remember, South Africans, that the killing of a fellow black African is a bad seed that you are sowing. And when the harvest comes, you guys are going to reap it. You see, the white man is laughing at you people now. You all fought for, for freedom. And you, for, you so quickly forgot the speech, the speech that Nelson Mandela made the day he was inaugurated as the president of, the first black man president of South Africa. You all forgot. They'll be laughing at you people. They say, okay, now, look at, in a few years that we have put them in position, look at what they are, they are killing themselves. What do you expect? So let this be a warning to Nigerian men. You, 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 you leave a, a, a trail of single parents all over. It's not just hap happening in, in, in uh, South Africa. It's not just happening in, in Europe. It happens in Canada. It happens in America as well. Some of them have children all over in different states. They have the one that they are staying with in their state. In, they have a wife at home. They are staying with, living with in their house. And the woman will be working. Who, uh, sometimes the, the woman works more than the man. And they will be paying, he will be paying child support. The wife at home is paying for child support. Sometimes they are married to their women at home. He will go out and have an affair with a woman outside. And the wife does not know. And then before you know it, the lady has dragged him. And he has to pay that child support. And maybe he doesn't really have a good job. And the wife is a nurse. She has to work and contribute to this child support. She is not the one who went to get another woman pregnant. But the money is coming out of her purse. I don't know what has happened to this generation. And, and, I'm, and one thing I know is that is, is, is the people that we have voted into government that have let the man, the common man and the common woman, the, the future of the unborn children down. You, we, we vote these people in who campaign and promise heaven and earth. And once they are sitting in that office, they do not remember. They don't do nothing. There is no good roads. There is no good medical facility. There is no social funding. Like if you are not working, you get some kind of sort of um, uh, uh, um, you get some kind of um, sort of uh, support from from the government. I'm sorry, the flash has is gone down because the battery is going down. I'm going to end up very very soon, so that's why it's it's dim dim the people. You can see me. Um, there's no so, so, some kind of social support from from the government where if you are a single parent or you are elderly or you are disabled or you have lost your job you can, you get some kind of a little bit of money or support from the government there's nothing like that there is no good education there is no free education there is no security there is no water there's no electricity this main social amenities which is the basic human right of every man and every woman every boy child every boy girl every uh, boy child uh, 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 boy child every uh, boy um, every child girl every unborn baby this is your basic human right it's not provided by the government so this is why some people are suffering and going to South Africa. And there is no big deal about South Africa. South Africa is just like every other country. Because the people who still run the economy are the white people. And they are not spreading their money. Some relocated, but they are still in charge of the government. You might have a black man there as the president of South Africa. But he is not, they don't have economical power to, to provide, uh, provide and give the black people good quality life. So it's still the same. I watched a video, a program on TV the other day. And the, the areas that some of the South Africans are living is like Oba Market or Yanga. Very rough, very dirty. So I want to use this opportunity to urge. There is no place like home. Yeah? No matter how good a stepmother is, a stepmother cannot be like your, your, your natural and biological mother. Home is home. 
Even if you are living in one room in a hut in your village, it's better to live there in peace than to go and live in another man's land in the mansion, but every day you cannot sleep at night. You don't know if you will see the next morning. It's best for you to live in your hut, in your village, in peace. So, what's up, guys? Uh, leave a comment, share, subscribe, press that bell button for notifications. In that way, you know when we go live streaming or oh, a new video have been uploaded. Always remember to leave a comment. In that way, we keep the education mainstream and awareness going within us and in our community. Until our next video, I say love and peace. Hi, this is your favorite babe, your favorite Titi, Kirsty Valentine. Thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today. I've got wonderful news. I've got wonderful news. This is your favorite channel. Do not forget to subscribe, to press that bell button for notifications. In that way, you know when we go live streaming or when a new video has been uploaded. Always remember to share Christy Valentine's video with your family, your friends, your colleague, your church members, your mama, your papa, your boyfriend, your love. And always remember to like and leave a comment in that way we keep the conversation buzzing and rolling until our next video love and peace